Can I mention Jeep? Welcome to the first intermission from the Jeep 4 by Electric Studio. Get exceptional range with Jeep plug-in hybrid SUVs, Jeep. Making Freedom Electric. And now it's time for To The Point. I know these are the dog days because we're as punchy in what we call the Lotus <laughs> as we'd be in the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But it's not just the dog days. It's the nervous cat days for players. It's the trade deadline Friday for coaches, the playoff races. You can start to feel the heat. And uh, let's begin with a point that was made prior to the game. Kyle Bukowskis and Sheldon Keefe. Uh, Domi, Bertuzzi, uh, Nylander line has had some success sort of individually, uh, but collectively as a line, we'd like to do it, like you to do a better job, especially defensively. So that's something we're looking at, uh, yet we don't want to just abandon it. Well, a little bit of foreshadowing there for Sheldon Keith, because tonight that's the line that was on for the one goal against. And they're in, they're in an okay situation here. It's a three on three in this puck's rim. Now, the problem is there's a few mistakes. Domi here, after he makes that play, he doesn't recover to the, to the net quick enough. And Nylander goes for a little bit of a skate. And Nylander can be that weak side winger who kind of insulates in case of a breakdown with the high forward and Lafreniere. They're, they're not able to sort it out quick enough. And it's just a simple defensive zone coverage thing. There should be layers of defense there so that goal doesn't happen. All right, here's another example of uh, maybe frayed nerves. And you can understand it. The Vancouver Canucks have suddenly hit a slump. And this was yep. Rick Tockett addressing the media. You know, you get punched in the mouth. You got you to gotta stand up and take it. You know, you can't be hanging your heads. I hate when guys hang their heads. You got to have your chest up ready to go. Um, and we're, in a, we're a bit of a funk right now. And we got to get out of it. One way out of it might be the signing of Elias Pettersson to his eight-year contract, Kelly. Yes. But this goes back to that last game, and you could tell Pettersson was affected by all 100%. This. Who wouldn't be, right? So the team's struggling. He's struggling. He's worried about his contract. And we saw a lot of bad body language uh, versus L.A. So here's the turnover, and that's going to lead to the Kopitar goal. But just watch Pettersson after. And it's he doesn't really make any mistake here. He's not in great position. But watch this. He's just he's beside himself, and Jennifer only got worse for him. And, and unfortunately, that wasn't the only example, right? Here's one down on the offensive zone. He knows it right away and literally hangs his head and then isn't very good with the effort on the back check. So I think it's just an example, Kel, as you mentioned, that as professional as these players are, there's no question it's a burden on them. Yeah. And you've seen the shift in his communication from before the season, saying he was going to wait it out, to now understanding he did want to sign. So hopefully, and in all of his comments, right, much respect to his teammates, the, the management, the coaching staff. And so for talk it clear in that expression that there's no room for those sort of reactions. The, the problem with the head hanging for, for me and probably for Rick Talkett is that in that split second, you could be recovering. You could be recovering yes. back towards... And maybe you can be that first yep. back checker. So yep. you, you have time to reflect later and watch video and see the mistake you made or you lost the puck. But I think in the moment, it's, it's such a quick game that you have to react and every half a second counts. How would uh, he feel, Elias, about the, the rumor getting out that Carolina's proposed a trade and if you don't sign with us, uh, we may have to look at making the trade. It seemed like a tactic uh, and it seemed like a town they might have picked that they know he doesn't want to go to. Or am I just thinking too much? It's all part of the, No, I don't think you're thinking too much. It's all part of the negotiation, right? He said something like like he wasn't going to show his cards. So, I mean, it's a game between both sides, and you have to understand that. Well, yeah, and he talks about playing the game too, right? Yes, so, I feel he like did. you think about just focusing on the game on the ice, but there is all of this oh, going yeah. on behind the scenes that's clearly it's a it's been a factor. For what him. I think is critical about the signing is that when you're trying to win the Stanley Cup, everything has to align and everything has to be running smoothly and, and perfect, ideally, really. And when you have a guy and there's this lingering contract talk, and some of the teammates maybe behind closed doors are starting to question, does he really want to be here? Mm -hmm. Does he want to be a part of this, right? Well, if he does, how come he hasn't signed yet? So I think some of those questions started to become too much noise where it was very important for Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin to get this yep. signing done to prove to his core, hey, we're solid. We're solid moving forward. And it's been a juggling act for Calgary as well. And we'll get to Mark Stone yes. and some of that uh, in that game against Pittsburgh later on. All right, Sheldon Keefe, giving it to the referees. Okay, so he was going overboard. He was starting to lose his cool, and we could see this building this was uh, about 10 days ago in Arizona been called for a penalty they scored Arizona so he's saying to the ref it's on you it's on you Tuesday he's going to get kicked out of the game fine for 25,000 that was a good thing because it happened in February so I'm thinking you know what that's okay because all the refs know they all talk it could have happened in the playoffs and then it would have been big big danger so I think this was a good thing for Keith to go through and to learn from 
I think intensity is good. To me, I'd like to see a little more composure. Yes, he disagrees with some of the calls. Maybe it was building up, but I feel like it could have been handled with a little more, more composure. I will never have a problem with my coach showing passion. Never. Torts runs down the hallway, no problems with it. I will never have a problem if my coach is passionate. Yeah, they, they make mistakes. Sometimes on the ice we make mistakes and we get over passion. I, I love it. I think it's part of the game. I think his players respect that. Maybe later we'll show. He did say publicly it was yeah. a lack of focus, and I'm asking those yeah. guys to focus. I better yeah. focus. All yes. right, uh, the late Brian Mulroney, uh, 18th Prime Minister of Canada. Here we are at the 93 Montreal Canadiens Stanley Cup. Look at Nicholas. Would have been seven or eight at the time, his youngest son. Such a great expression on his face. But uh, the Prime Minister, uh, I always recall him saying, we are standing here uh, proud to serve a better Canada. That was just uh, October the 6th, uh, 83. He said that before becoming the 18th Prime Minister of the country. So to Mila, to Caroline, to Mark and Nicholas and Ben uh, and their loved ones, uh, thank you, Brian, for all that you did for us. All our love from Hockey Night in Canada.